Good morning. This morning's verse is in the book of Mark. It's Mark 4, 9. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I dug into this one a little bit. And first of all, what we have going on here is we have Jesus speaking to the disciples and he's telling them a parable. We all know that Jesus spoke in parables. He taught in parables. And what he was saying, what this verse is saying, is if anybody has ears to hear, meaning they know Jesus, they are, they, I can't say they're a Christian at that time because Jesus, had, Jesus hadn't died yet. But if they have ears to hear, meaning if they have the heart of Jesus, if they are following him, if they are looking to learn from him and actually being his disciples, then they're being changed from the inside out. And in doing that, they get ears that are tuned to his voice. And by that, not only can they hear what he's saying, but they understand what he means. And that's there's an NLT version of this that I like better. And that version is, then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And that is what is being spoken of here. People who hear God's teachings and understand the meaning. You see, Jesus taught with worldly stories that had supernatural and eternal lessons and meanings. In this particular situation, he's talking about um, a sower sowing in the field and where all the seeds fall. Some fall on hard rock, some fall on soil, some fall on thistles, and the different things that happen because of where those, where those seeds fell. Were the lessons hurt? Did they, did they pierce people's heart and change them? Or did they just think it was a story about farming? But what I find so interesting here is this is a verse that speaks about Jesus and his teachings and how he teaches. But as I read this today, it hit me differently. And it hit me largely because of some things that I've been going through. And I've been so busy lately that I didn't get to cover one of my most favorite verses. And it's one of the verses and stories that this entire site is about. But what hit me in today's verse, Mark 4, 9, let he, and he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the NLT adds in, let him understand. So I've had some conversations lately and people ask, how are you doing? And the responses come back, I'm okay. And they're like, oh, good, I'm glad to hear it. But no, they didn't actually hear. You know, we go through life and we ask people flippantly and superficially, how you doing? I'm good. And maybe we answer superficially without wanting to get into it. Maybe there's actually a hurt. Maybe there's actually something there that we need to go, no, how really are you doing? I was sitting at work the other day and somebody got a phone call um, about their mom and their mom had um, had had uh, had headed into the hospital and, and wasn't doing well. And I could tell that they were bothered. Um, I was eating lunch and kind of minding my own business, but I overheard it and there were people around and I could see that there were things in that moment. But about five minutes later, when everybody cleared, I went over and said, how are you doing? And the response was pretty good. And I said, no, how are you doing? And then they told me about the phone call and they had the opportunity to open up and to share. And that is where I find myself sitting in this verse today. I find myself in my life in moments of chaos and confusion and things coming at me so hard and so fast that one, I feel overwhelmed at times, but two, how many opportunities am I missing to be there for somebody else? How many opportunities am I missing what they said and what God is telling me to do? I'm missing both things because I don't have my ears tuned to them because I'm too much in here in my own place or I don't have my ears tuned to him because I'm too worried about what's going on in my own space. And in that, I'm just not available for anybody else and I'm not available for God. I'm not available to go and do the things that he has told me to do, to go and love thy neighbor. Which leads me back to the verse from the other day that I missed. And that is Matthew 18, 12. And that is the story of this Facebook site and of this YouTube channel. And that story is this. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go in search of the one that went astray? You see, that's what I am 100 is. That's the story. It's my story. Quite likely it's in your version of this verse. It's your story as well. 
When I look around the world, I see people around me who seemingly have it all together. Hey, they're happy. They have fantastic family situations. Their life is good. They quote unquote, couldn't be more blessed. And that might not be where I'm sitting. So in that story, I am the 100th sheep. I am the one that's lost. In my version of the story, I look around, everybody else is good. I am a total train wreck. And I know people that have listened to that story and they've heard me speak of this before and they've said, you're right, in that version of the story, to them, they were the one that was lost. And everybody else seemed to have it together. And the beauty of this verse is that God never leaves any one of us go off by ourselves. We may turn and walk from him, but he's never turned and walked from us, ever. And so we get to be useful to God. We, we have verses and prayers that we say, God, let me be your hands and feet. But let's face it, if we're not his eyes, if we don't have, haven't been given his eyes and ears and are in those moments available listening for the things that he wants us to do, we will miss the, the eyes and ears moment and we never therefore have a chance at the hands and feet moment. And we never have a chance to love our neighbor the way we're supposed to love ourselves and to show God's love and to love him through obeying his command to love others. And we never get the chance to run out of the pasture and find the sheep or help find the sheep who's hurting, who needs picked up and carried for a bit because we simply don't have the ears to hear and understand. So these verses really wrapped together to me today. And, and I pray that in this, you'll have that moment where you sit down and think to yourself, God, am I available? Am I listening to you with my ears? And am I listening with my heart and spending time in your word such that I understand? And then once I do, Lord, am I obedient so that I turn and I walk into the crazy, into the mess to go help somebody else who is stuck there. Because each and every one of us as Christians, we have a responsibility to go look for that sheep. Let's face it, the Great Commission, we were told, go and make disciples. Go look for the lost. Go help the lost. So again, Mark 4, 9 and he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. In Matthew 18, 12, what do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go into the search of the one that went astray? Father God, thank you for not leaving me lost. Thank you for being the great shepherd who came, who tends the gate, who calls me home. Father God, thank you for never leaving me to my own devices, no matter how many times I may get distracted. Father, allow me to be a better child of yours, a better disciple, a better follower, Lord. Help me to learn more and listen more such that I can go and I can do more. Father God, each week, I pray that, that you give us eyes and ears so that, we can, we, so that we can be your hands and feet. But Father God, that couldn't be more clear to me than it is this morning. Father God, allow me the eyes to see when somebody is in need, the ears to hear what you want me to do, the heart to take action, and the obedience to take action so that I can use the feet that you've given me to go where you want me and the hands to do what you want me to do. Father God, thank you for these verses and the reminder and the lesson. And Father God, please, Lord, if anybody is lost today and feeling overwhelmed, Father God, please let them reach out to me and let me make the time if I don't have it 
to make certain that I don't leave any of your sheep lost on my watch. Father God, I know it's not my job to save, but it is my job to seek. To seek you and to seek them. To chase you and to chase them. So Father God, for those that are hurt or down, feeling overwhelmed, feeling lost, confused, feeling like they just need a moment of rest, Father God, I ask that you allow them to reach out to me. And Lord, let me either be available or make myself available to you and to them. Father God, I ask this in your son's precious holy name. Amen. I hear your call. I am available. I say yes, Lord. pray that you take a moment today to go find the person that may need to hear from you. Take a moment to spend some time on your knees with your God and listen to what he has to say. Go where he wants you to go. Remember, no matter how far off the beaten path you may be, somebody is there looking for you and waiting for you. And I promise you, that our God is there with open arms waiting for you to come back home. So go find him today if it's a tough moment. And go thank him today if it's not. And if you're in a moment where you feel overwhelmed, then please write back on this site. Let people know that you need a hand and you need an ear, maybe even a shoulder. You can post anonymously on this site, so you don't even have to throw out there who you are and what you're dealing with. If you just need to get something off your chest, do it here. Have a fantastic day. God bless you. He is with you. And we will see you again soon.